All right, hey, what's going on? Today we're going to be talking about circles. And in particular, we're going to be asking ourselves what happens when we put a triangle on the inside of a circle. Short answer is that it depends on the kind of triangle. Now today we're going to be looking at the highly convenient case where one of the sides of the triangle happens to be a diameter of the circle. Now as you can see from the text here, any triangle inscribed inside of a circle with one side a diameter of the circle as we see in our diagram here to the left, the opposite side to the diameter must be a right angle. That means in our case angle B is 90 degrees because that angle is opposite to the diameter AC. Now remember, we're dealing with triangles here. That means that when you add up all the angles, you're supposed to get 180 degrees. In our sample, we have the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C is supposed to equal 180. Now, again, we understand that angle B is supposed to be a right angle, so we could just replace that with 90 degrees, and that gives us the equation we have here on the bottom. All right, let's go ahead and see how we can put this information to use. Our first example is going to ask us to solve for a variable. Now as you can see here we have a triangle inscribed inside of a circle where one of the sides is a diameter. That means that this angle Q here is supposed to be a 90 degree angle. Plus, since we have a triangle that means that when we add all our angles together we're going to get 180. So we have the 2x minus 5, we'll put that in parentheses to let us know that that comes from a single angle, plus the 90 plus the 15 all equals 180. We'll get rid of those parentheses now because honestly they were just there to help us figure out like which numbers came from which angles and we're just going to have a normal equation. We'll combine our like terms right now to get 2x, negative 5, and 90, and 15 all together makes 100 and then we have equals 180. We're solving for x here so we minus 100 from both sides. This gives us 2x equals 80 and then of course we're going to divide both sides by 2. This will give us an answer of x is equal to 40. All right, no fuss, no muss. That problem was for babies. Let's go ahead and take a look at something that's a little bit different. This time around, we're asked to solve for a particular angle measure. In this case, we want angle M, that's this guy right here with the X plus 20. Now, since the measure of angle M depends on X, our course of action is going to be to solve for X like we normally would, and then plug in whatever X is to X plus 20. So let's figure out what we know. First of all, we have a triangle inscribed inside of a circle where one of the sides is a diameter. That means that our angle over here, N, is a 90 degree angle. So when we add all our angles together, we're supposed to get 180. We have the 3x minus 5 representing that angle L over there, plus the 90 degrees for the N that we just figured out, plus the x plus 20 in parentheses so we know that that comes from M, all equals 180. Next, we're just going to go ahead and drop these parentheses here because they serve no mathematical purpose. We put them there, again, so that we could stay organized and know which variables and numbers went together with which angles. So now we're going to combine our like terms. 3x and x is 4x, and then 90 minus 5 plus 20 is 105, all equals 180. Solve them for x here, so we're going to subtract 105 from both sides. This gives us 4x is equal to... 75 and then we want to solve for x so we divide by 4. Now 75 can't be divided by 4 very nicely so we can either leave it as a fraction like this or we can write it as a mixed number or as a decimal. Let's just take the mixed number for now 18 and 3 fourths. Now remember we weren't asked to find x we wanted to find the measure of angle m and angle m is x plus 20. We got a value for x let's plug that in. This means that the measure of angle M is equal to our X value of 18 and 3 fourths plus 20. And that's going to give us 38 and 3 fourths. We're talking about an angle here, so we need degrees. There we go. So we solve for X and then we plug in. That's not hard either. Let's take a look at one more example. Okay, so in our last example here, we want to figure out the measure of angle H. Now notice that over here with angle H, we ain't got no variables and numbers. So the obvious question here is what are we supposed to do with this thing that doesn't seem to have enough information? Well, actually, unlike all the other problems, we are given a little bit more information about some of our sides here. You'll notice that these two sides are congruent. This means our triangle is an isosceles triangle. Now, there's a lot of nice features about isosceles triangles, but one that's going to be very helpful to us here is the fact that in isosceles triangles, the base angles are congruent. 
This means that angle H is congruent to angle F, or the measure of angle H is also equal to 3x plus 15. So when we go to solve for x and we make our equation, what we plug in for H is actually just going to be the same as what we plug in for F, or this thing, 3x plus 15. We know we got the 90 degree angle because our triangle is inscribed in a circle and one of the sides is the diameter. And then we have equal to 180 because that's what all the sum of the interior angles of any triangle is supposed to add up to. We get rid of our parentheses because we don't need to be as organized anymore. We can start to combine our like terms, so to speak. 3x and 3x gives us 6x. 15 and 90 and 15 is 120. All equals 180. I'm trying to solve for x here, so we're going to subtract 120 from both sides. Like so. That's going to give us 6x is equal to 60. And then we're going to divide everything by 6 which is going to give us an answer for x anyway, of x is equal to 10. Of course, we didn't want just x here. We wanted to figure out what the measure of angle h is. See in the question there? So h is the same as 3x plus 15. We got ourselves a value for x. If we want to figure out what h is, why don't we just go ahead and plug into our formula there? So the measure of angle h is equal to 3 times 10 plus 15. 3 times 10 is 30 plus 15, which gives us a final answer of 45 degrees. All right, so once again, pretty easy stuff here. It all comes from the same place, particularly if you have a triangle that's inscribed inside of a circle such that one of its sides is the diameter of the circle, then you know that the angle opposite the diameter is equal to 90 degrees. We also know that since we're dealing with triangles, the sum of the interior angles has to be 180 degrees. So no matter what, you're always going to be solving for x, and you start by taking all your angles, adding them together, setting them equal to 180. If you happen to have an isosceles triangle like in this last example here, then you know that the two base angles are actually the same measure. So, you know, if you don't feel like you got enough information, just double up on whatever it is that you got for the angle that you do have. That's how come we had the 3x plus 15 twice when we set up our equation. Then, once you got your equation, you just solve like you normally would. That should be business as usual. And once you have x, if you need to find the value of the angle itself, take that value for x and plug it into the appropriate expression from the figure that you got. All right, I think I'm just about sick of this stuff. You got everything that you need, so uh, I'm out. Later.